Hey everybody, Retro Pi Guy here. Today I want to talk about the Raspberry Pi 4 versus the Raspberry Pi 400 in terms of which is better for retro gaming. I get this question all the time ever since the Raspberry Pi 400 came out. So I want to just do a brief overlook of both of these different Raspberry Pis and talk about the pros and cons of each in terms of their use with retro gaming. So the Raspberry Pi 400, if you're not aware of this product, is a really amazing product. It's a keyboard like this that has the computer built into it. So it's basically a uh, one piece personal computer that you can take with you. You can plug it into pretty much any TV or monitor via an HDMI cable. It's the same HDMI cable that you'd use on a regular Raspberry Pi 4. Um, you'd be able to put your mouse on here, your power supply plugs in the back. You have an SD card slot right here. So you could put in a operating system, you could put in RetroPie, um, pretty much whatever you'd wanna do there. So um, it does have three USB ports and your regular ethernet cable port. So to compare that with the Raspberry Pi 4, you obviously have this keyboard here versus this small computer board. And you wouldn't be using this as it is, you'd be using this inside of a cooling fan case in order to keep this cool. So to touch on the cooling for both of these, which I think is the biggest takeaway from this video, um, and that's where they differ the most, obviously, um, in addition to their physical appearance here. So for cooling, when using this with a cooling fan case, you have a cooling fan constantly running. So, you know, whether you're idling on RetroPie or you're in there playing a N64 game, you're constantly cooling your system. So this doesn't overheat. It stays relatively cool um, throughout your entire time that it's turned on. Now with the Raspberry Pi 400, there's no cooling fan. There is a ventilation system here that creates airflow. Um, it works pretty well, but it doesn't work super well for retro gaming. Um, you know, its intended use is to be used as a PC and for PC usage, you're not really getting this too warm. You know, you're not doing anything that's really going to be pulling a lot from it. Maybe if you're on the internet and you're, um, you know, have a bunch of windows open and you're watching YouTube at the same time, then yeah, it's going to pull a little bit more. It's going to warm up a little bit quicker, but for retro gaming specifically, if you're using some of the later retro gaming, um, collections like N64, PlayStation, PSP, Dreamcast, stuff like that, that was more advanced. It's not from the, you know, eighties and early nineties. It's more towards the later nineties where obviously graphics were more advanced. Uh, games were much longer. All of that is going to pull more power from your system. Therefore it's going to need a little bit more cooling. Um, if you're playing these on this system, you're going to run into, um, cases where it does feel a little bit warm. If you touch the backside here, um, it's not going to blow up in your face or catch fire or anything like that. It's not that serious, but you could run into some issues where you see some audio um, lags or glitches um, or just regular gameplay, uh, gameplay lags in general. And that's usually from an overheating system. So that's not to say that you can't enjoy those games. You're just not gonna be able to enjoy them for long periods of time. So it just depends on how long you're gonna be playing them for. You know, I, I play games on here you know, here and there, it's perfectly fine, but I'm not playing for long periods of time. So the most of I've, I've played on here is probably an hour. You can play for a couple hours. You're not gonna experience any issues. However, if you're really into gaming and you're playing for hours and hours on end, I definitely don't recommend going with a Raspberry Pi 400. Definitely go with a Raspberry Pi 4. So when you put the Raspberry Pi 4 into a cooling fan case, you know, it looks something like this. Now this is an NES themed cooling fan case. If you open this up, you can see we have a cooling fan um, wired directly from the board on here. It's super easy to set up. We have a video that walks through exactly, you know, which pins you want to plug your cooling fan into. So I'll put a link in the description below just so it's easy to access for you. Uh, but when you have this running, the fan runs constantly, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about it kicking on or having sensors that pick up on different temperatures within. It runs constantly. so. As soon as you power on your Raspberry Pi 4, you have that fan going and you're covered. So now another thing to consider with these is your setup. You know, are you working at a desk like, you know, I have right behind me, which is where this um, sits, you know, 95% of the time. Um, if you're working at a desk and you're not worried about this sitting on a mantle or a ledge or, um, you know, being inconspicuous in your uh, living room setup, then this would be fine for you. You know, you're not playing for hours on end. 
perfect. You can use this from a desk, no problem. You know, you just pop out the SD card when you're ready to turn this back into a PC, you can put your Raspberry Pi operating system on there and you're good to go. Um, but if you're gonna be using this in like a living room on a big screen TV or something like that, I just think that this is the better option because you can see the size comparison here. You know, have this here versus this. You know, it's a big difference. I mean, we could probably put three of these across the length of the keyboard here. So, you know, if you're in a living room, like I said, this will fit on the mantle super easily. It's really small. I think it looks bigger in the video than it does in person. And this is one of the bigger cases as well. You can see when I open this up, um, I do have this whole section here that's additional, you know, to, to accommodate the cooling fan. A lot of the other ones, the cooling fan sits on top. So your case would only be, you know, this big. You wouldn't have that extra inch by what, three and a half inches, I'd say. So this is definitely the, you know, one of the larger ones out there. So if you have a wife like, like I do, that is uh, really particular about how things look, you know, when I used to have this in my living room before I had this office here, um, you know, if I put a keyboard up on the mantle, I would hear about that for days. So, you know, if you have a situation like that, go with one of these. It's just super inconspicuous. They'll, you know, your wife will hardly notice it here. And it actually looks cool too. It's, it's a conversation piece, you know, it takes you back in time. This particular one, you know, it looks like the, and yes, so I think that it, you know, goes a long way with nostalgia and, and um, you know, people are going to pick it out on your mantle and, you know, ask you about it and say, that's, you know, tell you how cool it is. So um, that's my opinion. I have absolutely nothing against this. I use it daily. I probably use it more than this because uh, finding time to get into games for long periods of time with my busy schedule uh, can be quite a challenge, but I'm constantly going in and altering settings on cards and making adjustments or updates and whatnot. And I use this for all that because you have the keyboard built in. So if you're going in and you're doing stuff like that where you need a keyboard, obviously it's great to have that built in, but of course you could always, you know, bring a keyboard in like this, uh, which plugs in through a USB port, you know, just plug it into this guy here and you have a portable keyboard. So obviously you can handle either direction that you go with this. That's just my recommendation. If you're doing hours and hours of gaming, or you want the at least to have the option to do hours and hours of gaming without worrying about overheating, then the Raspberry Pi 4 with a cooling fan case is definitely the way to go. So I just want to give you guys a brief um, opinion, I guess, on what I think is better and why. Um, so that's going to do it for today. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of gameplay demos. Um, video tutorials, uh, product reviews. We're gonna be doing a lot of virtual pinball stuff coming soon in the next couple of weeks. So definitely subscribe to us here. And of course, check us out online at www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.